And uh, welcome you to uh, Dad to Dad, another episode brought to you by National Parents Union. Um, honored to be this week's host. And I uh, want to introduce uh, some of my colleagues here. We'll start with Tim. Hey, thanks, John. Uh, my name is Tim Langan with the National Parents Union, uh, father of uh, Max, Dylan, Miles, Matthew, and David. Calling here from Boston, Massachusetts. Glad to see you guys again. Good seeing you too. Hey, Michael Scott here from uh, Ohio, son of Vassie and Rashida Scott, proud father of Addison and Grayson, and husband to Megan. Hey, everybody. I'm uh, Dr. Jose Manuel Villarreal from San Diego, uh, son of Jose Macario, rest in peace, and Maria Irene, and two wonderful boys, and Nathan Macario and Noah Manuel. Thank you, gentlemen. And once again, I'm John Monteleon, hailing from Lorraine, Ohio, a proud son of Lynette and Joseph Monteleon, and extremely proud father of Rochelle and Antonia Monteleon. And uh, gentlemen, speaking of fatherhood, just want to do a little systems check, see how everybody's Father's Day went, um, hear a little bit about what you did and how you spent your weekend. So we'll start off with you, Mike. How was your Father's Day? Uh, it was cool. I was in this backyard, hanging out. Um, with my father-in-law and my father uh, and my mother and mother-in-law, my wife and kids. And we um, are fortunate enough to have some space where we could social distance a bit. So some of us were up here, some of us were down there. Um, we had some tunes playing. I grilled a little bit um, and the ladies really took care of us. So it was pretty awesome. It was, it was, most importantly, it was awesome to see my father and, and my father-in-law just really happy to be playing with the grandkids. Like at the end of the day, that was, that was the best gift I could have gotten. Awesome, good to hear, man, good to hear. Tim, how about you? Yeah, Jesus Christ, I'm still recovering, man. Like I said, we had my two boys, Carrie's boys, so that's five boys, and then my brother came over with his uh, girlfriend's son. So we had six boys between the ages of 12 and seven. Um, I was up nice and early. The boys actually brought me breakfast in bed. Uh, they washed my car as well as, as well as kids that age can. You know, it doesn't smell anymore. And then, uh, you know, we hung out for a little bit and then we just had lunch and dinner. And uh, like I told you guys, I was in bed by 7.45 in my clothes. Carrie put the comforter over me. I was out like a light. So it was a really, it was a great day that was really blessed. Um, like I said, we made it special, especially for uh, you know uh, Matthew, Miles, and David. It was their first, their first uh, Father's Day without their dad, so uh, it was really special. I'm so glad I got to share it with them. Wonderful, Jose. Listen, man, my uh, my wife uh, really set up a beautiful three two night three day at a bed and breakfast uh, that I was at this weekend. Man, I had three squares. The place was clean. People wore masks. Uh, you know, they, they gave me a bunch of tests, you know, it was really good. Uh, but upon my return, I received some acrylic paints and some, some canvas. And so now I'm going to kick it up a little higher on these drawings. And I'm actually really excited to start sketching on canvas, uh, would be my next step. And actually, Mike, any reaction to the, the outlet? You know, <laughs> my daughter is going around with outlet every day, all day. Like she loves it. I mean, it is good. It was on my desk. Now it's up in her room. Uh, next show, I'll have to maybe do on location. Um, Grayson grabbed the Mickey, actually. Uh, nice. So they were big hits. Um, good, you know. man. So thank good. you. Bro. That was pretty awesome. You're welcome. Good, good. So listen, fellas, this was a pretty awesome weekend for me. Like I shared with you last episode, my daughter turned 19 on Saturday. Nice. Um, so we had, a, we had a birthday party at my ex-wife's house. Um, with some friends and family. Um, we had a great time. We were there till like two in the morning. Um, and then the next day we went to my brother's and my daughter's for Father's Day. Um, and and one, of the, one of the nicest things that my daughter was able to share with us and share with me is she was, she was just so appreciative on how like we could get together, her mom and I, with all of our friends and just really have a good time. Um, and there not be any issues. And I think that's one thing that like we're really blessed for is that, you know, sometimes in divorce, family and friends, they kind of tend to take sides. Um, and our family and friends, you know, they, they love us both unconditionally. Um, and it was a good time to have a nice setting and to celebrate her during that day and make it about her. So such a good weekend, such a good weekend. 
Uh, but gentlemen, this week's topic is uh, should men be good with their hands? So I'm going to kick off the question and uh, I'm going to start with Jose. So Jose, as, 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 the, as the matriarch, as the man of the family, should, should we be good with our hands? Mike, you're too much. Uh, I would say <laughs> that it's the answer is yes with an and. Okay. Not yes, but, but yes, and. I would say that it's important that, and I'll speak, I, I won't speak for all men. I'll speak for a man in, in my circle. I think you got the layers of uh, I'm Latino. Um, I, I was raised working with my hands. And so it has been a blessing that my father gave me that gift to work with my hands. I'm not a handyman but I can fix things. I don't know if that makes sense, man. I, you know, it may not, may not look pretty, but it works. Uh, so then I get the experts in whenever I need them, like a plumber the other day, I just don't have time for it. But I think it's important. I think it's important to at least understand how things work. And if you can play with it with your hands and get something to fix or work, that would be fantastic. I also think on the other side of it, uh, hands do matter. I think it's important to be able to know how to give a massage to your loved one or your child if they're ailing if they bump their foot or something you know that care that touch from a male figure a father mm -hmm. touching their child in a way is magic is magic and i would say working with your hands is the yes and because it's, it's greater than how do you build something it's also how do you touch something which spreads that love uh to that person because it's everything man mm -hmm. that touch is everything yeah Oh, All here right. we go with Mike. Oh, no, taking a nap. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so I might get settled in. Tim, how, how about you? Talk, talk, talk about your hands, Mike. You don't give, yeah, I get, well, I have to tell you, um, my grandfather grew up as a handyman. He was fixing the house till he was 75. He clearly did not pass it on to my dad, and my dad did not pass it on to me. I am so bad with my hands. I, I can get things to look like the box, but that's about it. My ex-wife did not let me put together anything for the baby, the crib. They're like, she's like, I want my kid to make it to six months old, six months old. Uh, but, you know, I have to tell you that the last few years, I've realized how, um, I, I know how sometimes that, that's left me at a loss, right? Things like changing the tire, fixing stuff around the house. These little things add up. And I don't want my kids to be like that. I want them to be self-sufficient. So just in the last few years, I've tried to like learn how to do something. Maybe it's like changing the oil, you know, or like, you know, I'm, I'm all pumped about my garden right now, doing stuff like that outside. Um, I'm one of those nerds now. It seems like this lines outside of Home Depot because everyone wants to fix their house. And I'm getting into that, you know, and I'm like, I'm going to take, I'm actually going to take down the fence around our house and put up a new fence, you know, and power wash the house. Um, and I want my boys to see that. Um, what Jose said, though, too, about the importance of a touch with your child, though, is so true. And I actually didn't realize that until I, was, I got divorced. And in Massachusetts, if you have kids under a certain age, you have to take a class. Mm -hmm. And this person was a great guy. And he talked about talking with your kids. And I forget what he was saying, but he says, you know, you explain something to your son and then you put your hand on the neck, like he said, explain it, touch him, explain it, touch him on the shoulder. And just how tender and how important that is, um, especially for a male to see that with your dad. So, yeah, that's great. So I'm, I'm learning the handyman thing. Um, you know, the country's a little bit crazy right now. Apocalypse revolution comes. I want to be able to take care of my family, you know, <laughs> and uh, and but I want to make sure like my sons know it's okay to touch other people in a certain way. And I want them to feel that that love between me and them. Yeah, so Tim, my my, my upbringing is, is very similar to yours. Uh, my, my grandfather was a Mason. Um, matter of fact, if, if, if you drive around town, um, especially in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. a lot of the churches that are standing, he probably had something to do with. Um, okay. And then my dad, my dad was a machinist um, and it was a steel worker. And growing up, you know, like every young man, when they see their dad working on something, they're intrigued and they, they, they want to get involved. Not in a rude way, my dad would kind of like push me away and say that mm -hmm. my, job was, my job was to be good at school. Go be good at school. That's, that's your job. So he always used to tell me, it's important for you to work with your mind so you don't have to work with your hands yep. uh, when you grow up. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I posed that question like, 
and, and, and like you, now that I'm a homeowner, I, I see how expensive not being handy can yeah. be for a homeowner. So um, I, I pose this back to the both of you and, and Mike, and I know Mike is kind of busy, but I know he's listening. Um, is, is this something that as fathers, we should make sure that we pass on to our, our kids as, as even if we're not that handy ourselves, that, that we should make it a priority that they're able to do things around the house? Yeah, because I, even, even if I can't do it well, at least they see me trying, you know, like they see me putting an effort in, um, you know, and whether that's like, again, every morning now they see me water the garden, you know, or when I used to, when you could go to a gym, you know, and I had my kids in the daycare, every once in a while I'd show them, I would show them what, I, what I had done that day. Hopefully like someday they do that. Um, yeah, I think it's really important that they see us doing certain things um, so that they can do it on, on their own. Yeah. So, so Mike, now that you're hey. back with us, so first of all, talk, talk to us a little bit about your upbringing um, and, and, you know, was your father good with his hands? Are you good with your hands? Um, are you passing that down to Grayson? But I also want to pose this question to you as well. So my father growing up would tell me, I, I want you to be good with your mind so that you don't have to work with your hands when you, when you get older. Well, what do you feel about that comment? Because I know people that work with their hands and make more money than me. Um, and, and, and are more intelligent than me in, in that space. So I'll turn it over to you, Mike, for your thoughts. So I, first off, thank you uh, for allowing me to take that little bit of a commercial. Um, my wife was unloading uh, Addison and Grace, and they're both asleep, so she thought Grayson would stay asleep. <laughs> oh, okay. But obviously, uh, he was like, what's going on? Uh, I tried to work my hands, but only got me so far. Uh, but you know, now he's resting. So anyway, let me go back to um, the question. I, so before I've said things along the lines of know your skills, know who you are and be confident in that, right? So I am not great with my, in regards to fixing things. Mm -hmm. I know who I am. Um, my dad, mm, not really great at fixing things. Um, he knows who he is. Uh, the idea is, you know, use your strengths and how do my strengths uh, afford me an opportunity to still maintain the house, make sure everything is safe and um, fixed. So, you know, I do outsource. Um, I'm not going to lie, you know, but I, I also take advantage of opportunities to learn. So I, I'll come back to the how I talked about my father-in-law, my uh, father being together. My father-in-law is great with his hands. Um, heating and air conditioning, he builds uh, extensions to the house, remodels, bathrooms. Um, mm -hmm. My wife loves that stuff. So once again, going back to skills and choosing your partners wisely, yeah, she does a lot of that. And I'm okay with it, to be honest. Um, you know, she fixed the toilet when it was uh, broken. She did went on YouTube, found some things out, hooked up with her father. They handled it. Um, you know, I played with the kids um, and did some work while they do it. I, you got to be confident in who you are too, right? So I don't have that feeling of, well, I got to be the man. I got to be able to fix things. Um, I do believe in, in, the, in the care that comes with hands though. So, mm. like, um, you know, it, a, a gentle touch, I think we were talking about, goes a long way. You know, my kids do know me as the, the cuddler. I'm the, um, the, the, usually the one that, put, that can put them down like that. You know, I'm the daddy whisperer. Um, but that's, my, that's how I use my hands so um yeah i guess that's kind of my response to everything and it, and it wasn't anything that um growing up i was like oh man i really have to do this that or the other my grandfather though my dad's father was good with his hands knew all the tools and here's a funny story i was just sharing this the other day he would name out all these different types of tools and tell me to get them right trying to <laughs> I don't know what that. I don't know what that is, Grandpa. And he used to get so mad. How do you not know what? A, that, that, that? Uh, because my dad, you know, whatever. I'd never been exposed to it. But he was under the assumption that, um, because he knew, then of course his son had to know, and then of course I knew. I know I didn't have an interest. Um, so, yeah, that's a little bit. I don't know if I hit all the all the pieces, but you know, that's that's uh what Scott men are. Made of it, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna share with Grayson, whatever he's interested in though, like he loves to pull out the tools. Um, he loves to watch his grandfather uh, do things. My daughter Addison likes it a little bit more though. Mm -hmm. Let it happen. Yep. Yeah. And, and so, and you did answer all, all, all the points, Mike, but one, one of the things that 
I, I go back to with my father is during the time when he was telling me that it was more advantageous to get a, a college degree and, and there was there was more money to be made in that field with, with that level of education than it was for him when he was coming up. So I, I can see where he was going with that. Mm -hmm. um, but when I raised my girls, my, my oldest girl, Rochelle, is very handy, very hands-on. Matter of fact, there would be times where her mom and I would bring stuff home from the store that needed to be assembled. And, you know, I would go to work or football practice and I'd come home and it would be assembled. And, and Rochelle just took to it naturally. Um, my other daughter, Antonia, not not so much. But uh, so I just I was just wondering, like, Jose, like, you know, you talked about, you know, being useful with your hands kind of ran through your family. Um, you know, what, was there any push for for you not to go in that direction or, or, or further your schooling instead? Yeah, it's a similar statement as you were uh, given. Same here. I'm going to teach you how to work with your hands so you can work with your mind because they knew it was going to be grueling. They knew it was not going to be fun. Mm -hmm. um, I, I still will never forget, man, holding that transmission up from my dad in that 1974, you know, Mercury Monarch four door or in that 1976 Chevy that I have sitting out there and all rusted up. But that gave me a lesson of patience, of, of self sort of regulation. I'm going to drop it. I'm going to drop it. And it was already a fix. My dad just made it seem like I was holding the whole transmission. But I'll tell you, it, it did give me to dabble in mechanics. You know, I, I can do some of that work, you know, I, in those old engines, not the new engines, uh, which gave me confidence. I mean, just having to change the battery the other day. I think what it, what it gave me, John, is it, it gave me uh, uh, to be humble. Uh, and my dad used to always say something. Okay, I'm going to say this to everybody, but it was more his generation. All right. Remember now, We've always heard now folks, artists and, and actors say, well, it was, it was kind of okay to say it then, but it ain't okay to say it now. But my dad used to say in Spanish, if a man built it, a man can fix it. And now I would change it of, as a human fixed, built it, a human can fix it. So he gave me kind of that confidence about how to, how to manage that. Um, and, and yeah, that was going to be one of my outlets is maybe go into mechanics, maybe go into maybe construction of some sort. Um, but luckily, I stayed on that path to working with my mind. Uh, but I do enjoy getting my hands dirty. I ain't going to lie about that, even if I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I do enjoy that. It does. I love getting, I know this is another thing. I love getting cut. I like, not in a sadistic way, everybody. Just so I'll be calm down. <laughs> but I'm saying like, it's kind of like my, my, my badge, right? I, I hit my elbow. Oh, I got a bruise. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just makes you feel like you're alive. Like, like you are okay with it. Uh, what do you think, Mike? You get your hand yeah. up. So it's kind of interesting, like, I was looking around my yard as you were talking a little bit and I, I was thinking, you know, my brain went to like all those times my dad was showing me how to do the flower beds and make sure the yard is neat. Um, the grass is mowed, things are, so, so there's another element of hands there that I wasn't even thinking of, like shame on me for not, you know, honoring um, that piece. And yeah, I, there were many uh, bumps and bruises along the way um, of just, you know, really getting out here and, and doing stuff. Um, I, yes, it, there's so much to this, um, relative to hands and the, and the, and the purpose yes. of that beyond, you know, but so it's interesting as our conversation navigates, we've got some of those traditional fix it type of thing, which is where, you know, my brain went, and I think I, collectively we, when we started talking about this, but then it's just evolved through this dialogue on, on, on the multi purposes of care of. Uh, of using to fix, um, uh, of taking pride in the bruises and the bumps that come along with it. So I, when you said that, I was thinking of like, you know, I'm trying to get back into some shape there. So that mm. using my hands to, to really lift and, and get in shape, um, you know, there's, there's pain beyond that. And, and the best thing about a workout is that, that pain afterwards, right? That, that, that you actually did something. So yeah, that's kind of where I am with that. That's interesting. You know, all this talk makes me think about and I never thought we'd go down this avenue. It was almost like, I mean, I'm 43 years old now, but like, it, it was almost like a path to adulthood <laughs> for me because for years, you know, I would ask my dad, hey, let me do the snowblower for you. Let me cut the bushes for you. Let me do these things around the house. And he waved me away. He's like, no, 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 I want to do it. I want to do it. Well, now he's going to be 75 years old. He's getting too old. You know, he doesn't want to lift that, that clipper anymore. And I think I told you a couple weeks ago, I'm sitting out there and he came to me and he's like, Hey, can you do this? And I'm like, Oh yeah, I can do it. I mean, I got pictures of me running around with that chainsaw, cutting the, I, I was going to cut every single bush on this 
on this uh, on the block. I was so excited. But to me, it was almost like, again, that as we get older, you know, we're going to take care of our parents. You know, that's what it, that, that's what it meant for me. I'm going to do something for them now um, because they're getting too old to do it. How can I help them out? Um, I just love that. I love being able to use my hands to help my parents with th those kinds of things. So, you know, as I, as I listen to us talk, um, one of the byproducts of, of my dad not allowing me to do those more mechanical tasks um, steered me in a different direction, which, again, was using my hands. Um, I was the first one in my family that was able to, to type at, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a speed, you know, where like words per minute. I, I was the first one that was able to kind of like, you know, program for video games and uh you know use technology and be very savvy with it and and that's that's this generation right so like yeah they might not be out there building a bike or redesigning an engine um but they're doing things with their hands through technology and, yep. and what and tim i often hear you know you, you refer to minecraft with your boys i mean yeah that, that's using their hands and their mind right exactly exactly i love that actually it's funny the other day um david woke me up first thing in the morning and there's a game called Cuphead Man or it's, I'm sorry not Cuphead Man Cuphead because uh, I've been corrected many times and it's, it's like that old-timey cartoon illustration and um, yeah I hadn't played video games in years except for Minecraft and I'm playing I got the old time like the old controller and everything and I'm like I still got this this is good I was kicking his butt nice yeah I mean that's a gift and Jose yeah, take that go, go ahead Mike I'm uh, just telling Tim to keep kicking that butt. There's lessons. Kick that butt, there. Mike. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we we look at Jose, and, and Jose talks about it all the time. And, and right behind him is just like work with his hands, you know. Yep. And he, like so, Ho Jose, how do how do you share that with with your with your family and, and your your kids? Like it, it could be anything, right? It could be fixing things. It could be you know technology. It could be drawing. Yeah, I mean, I told you the story before, man, you know, dealing with that snake, those snakes in my house around here, living in the country, and uh, feeling a little bit like my son couldn't even hold the shovel, you know, so that was kind of a moment, and yeah, on the drawings, you know, it's it's modeling for them, you know, like I said, I, I on Saturdays, I open the windows, you know, turn some music on, and then just just settle in for two or three hours, and just get lost in it, and then my son started coming over, mm -hmm. my little one, and wanted to dabble in it. At first, he just walked right by me and went back to his computer to play those same games, I'm sure, Tim, that he plays, that your sons play. Uh, but I think it's modeling. I think it is modeling. I just, I just put it on Facebook how much I love that Michael models for us dads, you know, about how to, you know, be a dad in front of yep. the world. So I think it's just modeling uh, is really critical. But then you just a model one time is consistent, right? It'd be mm -hmm. one thing if Michael showed us his kids and he cared for his kids one time, but it's just for him, it's consistent. It's who Michael yeah. is. Yeah. And that says to us, like, yo, that's, that's powerful. I mean, that's who he, that's how he's built. And I want to apologize ahead of time. I do need to duck out of here in six minutes, but I, once, once again, I think dads, if you're a new dad, you want to kind of revisit your life because you've been working too much dads out there. Just be consistent and continue to model. Don't try to be perfect. I mean, because I'm not perfect. I, I gave you all some drawings and I was, I asked my wife four or five times, you think I should send this to John? You think I should send this to Mike? Stop it. It's the thought that counts. And they're going to laugh at it. I went through all those childhood traumas, man, of like getting, yeah, man, it was, it was I spun. I even showed my kid. I said, hey, my seventh grader, hey, give me a grade on this because he took art class in middle school. Give me a grade, one out of 10 because it was IB, International Baccalaureate. He goes, I'd give you a seven for that. I'm like, all right, cool. So uh, you think I should send it? Yeah, go ahead and send it. I was asking for feedback. It was Yelp. I mean, I was like, what do you think about that? What do you think? And all right, I'll, all right, fine. I, remember you asked me, John, hey, have you sent that? Remember that question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I waited a week because I was still thinking about it. I was like, I don't know. It might not be right. The foot on Mickey looks big. I mean, just all the critiques. But I think if I just, if I was just me and I model, try not to be perfect, just be your children to come to you, you know. And Mike, you, you talk about that a lot, Mike, being, being your authentic self. And, and for the audience, for those of you that, that don't know, Mike, Mike shares what he does, the activities with his kids. And he shared yeah. with us uh, about a week ago, uh, Addison and Grayson painting the, painting the porch. There, there it is. Awesome, there man. it is. 
And that so was not set up. Thank you, John. That's Addison, right. so talk to us about that. How, how did that come to be? Is this Addison just naturally inquiring about that? Like she just sees you modeling? Like how, how did that come, that, that beautiful picture come to be? Yeah, so, you know, the, the realness of it is I'm not good with my hands. Um, that is a post in front of our house that we're going to put a flag on it. And there's a lot of reasons why the flag was an important piece to do that. Um, given everything. Um, there's a lesson behind that for me and for her and for Grayson. Um, but the, the, how it happened is I was just standing, right? And we were talking about it. You know, my wife was talking about wanting to get it done. Um, and I, I'm not very good, but I was like, all right, yeah, you know, one day I got out there, got the sandpaper and like, it became a labor of love. And then my daughter was like, I want to paint it green can we paint the pole green? I was like, no, we can't, you know, paint the pole green. It's a white pole. But she said, well, I want to paint. And then she wanted to sand first. Well, I said, well, we have to sand all this first. And it took some time. And it just became this activity that we were doing together. So then when it was all said and done, um, the sanding part, I tried to sneak out and do the paint. I was like, she's going to get messy with the paint. I'm not sure if I want this to happen. And she was so crushed when she was like, dad, you're painting without me? And I said, you know, her mom went and got the you know, the Home Depot apron for her, gave her a little brush and she just started, you know, and, 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 and the idea is that, you know, you know, if you educate me, you know, I'll change the world. So why couldn't she be the, um, the, 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 the house flipper um, or, you know, whatever it may be, if that's something that she's really interested in, she's showing interest in now, it's our job to nurture that. Right. And going back to the relationship that I have with my father-in-law and he has with, the, with, with, with my kids is, He's really good, so why not take advantage of that? So she's going to have a ton of opportunities to thrive in that. So I think where it starts is where their interests are, and then you cultivate that, right? Grayson could care less. You know, he had his little sandpaper out for a little bit, but then he was like, man, I need to go ride my Cadillac. I'm out of here. Um, and he took off with the Cadillac. He didn't want any parts of, of, of sanding or painting, and that's okay, right? Um, but if I would have been stuck in, like, stereotypical, um, you know, just uh, – you know, what roles are, right? Gender roles. Then I would have been forcing him to sand and paint and he would have been upset. I'd have been pushing Addison off potentially. And then she would have been upset. And then what does that do for the relationship that we're trying to establish as, as a parent and child? So, hey man, you know, let it happen and, you know, and then cultivate the hell out of it. That's kind of my approach. Yeah, so we, so we know we're going to lose Jose here right. in a little bit. Uh, so we're we're gonna we're gonna wrap up the show uh, just as Jose steps off. Uh, uh, but Tim, I'm gonna turn it over to you uh, for for so, so some parting words because you said that you know you're trying to learn one new skill. Yeah. As you go along, when when you do that, do do you do you let you like like Mike? Do you bring in your kids? With yeah. You? I gotta tell you, man, when that fence comes down and we start putting that up, my boys are coming out there with me and they give me a hand. I get up in the morning and at night, they are out there watering the plants with me too. Um, especially the, the um, I'll, I'll put the hose out and while I'm putting the hose out, they're, um, they're watering some other plants I have on the side. I don't even know what they are. I just know they're big and green uh, mm -hmm. and they were given to me. But yeah, everything I do, trust me, it's gonna be a long summer, man, with that fence and they're gonna be there every, every foot. All right, all right. So, uh, we we want to wrap this show up, um, and we you know Jose, we we thank you. We're we're looking forward to the new time uh, to, to to rejoin from dad to dad. Um, but before we go, um, Jose, we'll start with you. We know we know you have to jump pretty soon. Um, what 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 is one thing you're gonna do this week that's gonna involve using your hands? Well, that's a good. I, I'm gonna get back to art because you know last weekend being a, being a bed and breakfast. Oh, come on, man. Who is this? This is Miley. This is Miles. He's gonna say. How you doing, Miles? Say hi. Hello, Miles. Wow. Hey, thanks for joining us. He's gonna be hopping uh, with the fence too. He doesn't know it yet. <laughs> Sorry, Jose. Go ahead. Man. <laughs> no, listen. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna get back to drawing after being in that bed and breakfast, which I appreciated so much to have some rest. But I, I got some things cooking, man. I'm I'm really excited, and maybe even kick, you know, break out that acrylic paint. All right. Yeah. Tim, how about you? I'm gonna hit my garden again, man. Like I said, little patches are popping up. I'm literally watching grass grow every day. I'm so excited. I can't wait to get out there. <laughs> Michael Scott. <laughs> 
No, um, <laughs> <laughs> terrible man, you're terrible. <laughs> hey, <laughs> um, no, I got a PG, Mike. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> See, that's, where, that's where you guys go with it. Uh, oh, um, actually, I'm, I'm gonna be lifting. Uh, I mean, I got a big move coming. I gotta move from Canton City Schools back to Lorraine City Schools. So I've got some boxes uh, to lift um, and, and move into the curriculum office. So that's what I'll be doing um, this week, moving boxes. All right. And for myself, I, I got a good friend who simultaneously is putting up a fence in his yard and helping his dad put in a, a driveway extension Ooh. in his yard. And I've been helping because like you, Jose, like, there's something about sweating. There's something about that yeah. manual labor that I just love doing. Um, and so whenever I hear that they're doing some work, I'm the first one there with my gloves on and, and, and ready to go. Um, but that, that is going to conclude our, our episode of Dad to Dad. I want to thank the National Parents Union for uh, allowing us and having us here in this space, and giving us this platform to, to talk to all of you. Uh, Michael Scott, thank you so much. Uh, Jose. Uh, looking forward. Congratulations once again. We're looking forward to the new time oh, and uh, and thank new you. day. And, and Tim, thank you for bringing us all together, sir. Thanks a lot, guys. I hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Say bye, man. Bye. Bye, bye Miles. Miles. <laughs>